this thread underneath. And I know that even though I'm crossing this way on the top side, Underneath, it's just going to be this little area here that is the thread underneath. And towards the end, I'll show you the back side of this and what it looks like on the back. So I'm trying to make sure that I pull this thread this way so that it's caught underneath. And then every so often I'm checking to make sure that I'm on, I'm on five, I've got five diagonals. You saw me unpick a little bit a little while ago because it wasn't on the five diagonals. So one, two, three, four, five. I know that's the correct place to drop the thread. stitch. Yeah, I'm looking at how long that tail is. No. I bet we can get two more out of that. Okay, I usually make a quilter's knot, which is kind of the same thing you do with a French knot, which is wrap it twice around your needle. in the stand a little bit more so that I can got it a little more without hunching over.
So for those of you who are wondering why I'm not looking at the pattern, because this is a counted canvas piece, just like counted cross stitch, there is a grid and a graph. When I get, when I get done with this thread, I'll show you. Just like counted cross stitch, counted canvas has sections that sometimes once it's outlined, you can just go brain dead. So what I'm doing here is a fern stitch named after the fern leaf. So you have the fronds going down. So now my son's got me thinking about Twitch now because he and my daughter use Twitch all the time to watch Overwatch stuff and they keep joking that I play grandma games, just things that I can play on my phone, but uh, during the pause there I was uh, talking to him and he's like, yeah, everybody live streams on Twitch, he says, I don't know I don't know if you can transfer it to YouTube, but if you're gonna, he says, if you're gonna do things live, you might as well do it. He says, but uh, he says, double check and if you're qualified for YouTube live streaming, do it that way. He says, you might as well, if you're doing it live, do it live so that people can ask questions while you're there streaming it. So that might be something to do Saturday or something. I'll throw it out on Stitch Mania and see if people are interested. I'll get this posted tonight too. Now we're getting into the tricky bit because You'll notice this row, a lot of the holes already have stitches in them. So it's going to be a matter of not disturbing those stitches while I lay the new ones. Here's the pattern for this one. And that's what a needlepoint stitch graph looks like. Um, not going to do you much good because you don't have the key as to which stitches go where. But that's the border I'm working on. So unlike unlike needle unlike cross stitch where um okay so with cross stitch, the hole would be the the intersection of your of your threads. With needlepoint, the lines are the threads. So this is going over two threads. This is going over this. Well, this is going over one intersection. This is going over two intersections. That's going over three. And it's amazing how I've had some people tell me, "Oh, I just I just can't I just can't see to convert a needlepoint pattern to cross stitch." 
Um, if you can't if you can't figure out how to convert a needlepoint pattern to cross stitch, um, I'm more than happy to graph that out for you. So I think I'm going to go with a little bit longer length this time, just because this is all that's left on the card. But I'm probably going to go half because. If it's too long, I can't stitch with it. I know you're supposed to have different scissors for silk threads than you do for your metallic ones. And my husband can give you a great example of why you should use why you shouldn't use the same scissors for stitching as you do for paper and other and other items. He does his <coughs> His YouTube channel is Black Forge Kitchen, and he does all things knives on his channel. And he's going to expand out to do some things cooking as well, but right now it's mainly knife reviews, but he keeps telling me, I had to do one, oh, I had to do a scissor review for your stitchers about what the best steels are and why you shouldn't use scissors on metallics and silks at the same time. It has to do with chipping your blades. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull six strands out here so I can thread up both needles at the same time. Six out of twelve strands. Get these suckers all lined up. I don't know if you can even see that. Again, just kind of stroking the thread, getting it to lay evenly. And I'm not even going to try and do it without the needle threader. Okay, for needlepoint canvas, you mount the project on stretcher bars. So these are stretcher bars. And there's two ways to stitch when you're mounted on stretcher, stretcher bars. I like stitching in the ditch, which means that the canvas is tacked on the back side of my bars. But I have other friends who feel that the bar gets in the way when they stitch, so they tack their canvas on top and stitch up top. Again, personal preference. No stitching police are going to pull you aside and say, oh, you don't stitch in the ditch or you stitch up top. You know what? Personal preference, whichever way works for you. Got to remember to do this on camera. Okay. And let me come up here. And away we go again. Pull that thread up out of the way. So 
what was what was the best thing you gave for Christmas this year? This year I was really lazy and I let the kids pick their own presents. And my husband and I didn't really do anything much for each other. So I didn't really Actually, I did give a cool present. So I work in software development. And our office is going to be closing. So this is the last Christmas I will have with all my guys. The majority of us were given opportunities to relocate to Georgia. I chose not to go. Half the office is going, half of the office is not. So I wanted to do something really nice for Christmas for the guys in my office. So I went to the dollar store and I got these glass mugs that were there. They're really, you know, really large, nice glass, heavy mugs. And then I went and got three 12 packs of Mountain Dew. And I went in in the middle of the night. Because I'm a manager, I have an office key, I can come in. And I, on everybody's desk, I put one of the mugs, and inside the mug I put a can of Mountain Dew. Because we all know developers run on Mountain Dew, right? Yes? So, or coffee, one or the other. Caffeine hot or caffeine cold. It all gets turned into code. And it was kind of fun the next day. There were only a handful of people in because it was the Friday before Christmas and a lot of them had the day off as, as vacation. But everybody was going, this is so cool. The only thing better would have been if it was root beer. I'm like, oh crap, I messed up, should have gotten root beer. But you know, you never know, some people don't like root beer. And I know everybody in the office drinks Mountain Dew. I'm not happy with that stitch. Too many twisted threads. So, I'm pretty sure that everybody else will like them too. Because the guys that were there really liked them. So I figured that's that's a fun present that I gave this year. So did you get any stitchy stuff? My dad always sends me money for Christmas along with a note of Make sure to tell me what you bought. And that's how, that's how I paid for the two stitch alongs that I'm participating in. That and I sold some stuff on eBay. Well, actually didn't quite get it listed on eBay. So I, I sold some stuff. some stuff by just telling people on Facebook that I was selling some stash. And one of the things I had was a copy of Villa Mirabilia, which has been discontinued. And somebody was very excited to get that. I just sold it for the last price I saw it sold on eBay, which was $60, and didn't even bat an eye. So. so that jingling sound is my dog trying to get herself comfortable. She does not like the way the blanket is, and so she is moving it around.
But now she has it settled down. It'll pop right through to the back side. Because sometimes when you trim the knots, you don't want them all the way through. Like that one, I'm going to have to pop poke through too. Things you stroke with your needle. That sounds dirty, doesn't it? Things you stroke with your needle. Kind of want to finish this section tonight. Have the border all completed. But my hands are starting to go numb. Which happens occasionally with me. I have tendonitis in my shoulders and it has a tendency to make my fingers go numb. It does not have to do with carpal tunnel. It is strictly tendonitis. You didn't realize your neck could affect your, affect your hands. So if I did do a live stream of stitching, what sort of projects would you like to see me work on? I'm not really talkative here either. But you know, it's kind of nice to just be in the house by myself with nothing but the dogs and just have some quiet time. Okay, I was really, really hoping to get this section done, but when you can't feel the needle anymore, it's time to take a break. So, that's these three fingers that go numb. Oh well. I think I'm dehydrated too. Normally my skin does not look like this. It means I haven't had nearly enough water today. I live in a desert. It's winter, but it's still a desert. So, anyway, floss tube. I think we'll call it good for right now. And I think this is the longest video I've ever made. It's a full hour, so um, we'll see how long it takes to upload. And if you'd be interested in seeing me do this live or working on another project live, um, I'll put a list of projects I've got that you could uh, choose from, and we'll see what people want to see. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Remember, patterns are just a place to start. You're welcome to make it your own. Um, I'll pull this over so you can see the whole piece. Maybe you can see the whole piece. Okay, so that's what I've got done. 
You see a little bit of gridding? I've just done enough outline gridding so that I can pretty much catch my place. But beyond that, I pull the, the grid strands out as I work. This looks really blue on the screen, but the color I'm using is a, it's a purple for Rainbow Galleries. It's S808, which I believe is called Royal Purple. But it's also trying to make the canvas white, and that's a pink canvas. So there, it, may, it may be something in the color correction on the uh, camera that's doing it. Anyway, um, see you all online. Have a happy new year, and uh, feel free to share your stitching plans down below. Love to hear what you all have planned for 2018. This is Stasha signing off, and we'll talk to you all later.